What basic life skill are you constantly amazed people lack? Awareness of others, and realizing your actions impact them, like when you drive slowly in the wrong lane, or because you're texting instead of moving, when the light changes, or when you walk through a doorway, that others are also using, and immediately stop dead center instead of moving to the side, to do whatever you need, in public, I'm always taking into consideration, how utilizing my own space will affect people. I try to get out of the way and be courteous, but a lot of people seem like they only think of themselves, or are completely oblivious. I lived in Japan for 3 years and the thing I miss the most is, that Japanese people are very self-aware, and are aware of others. For example when getting on an escalator everyone will stand on one side, so people who are in a rush have a lane to walk up, or down. Most Japanese people will inconvenience themselves, before they inconvenience a complete stranger. Most Japanese people will inconvenience themselves, before they inconvenience a complete stranger. If more of the world worked this way it would be a much better place. How to have a civil conversation with people, who disagree with them. More to the point, controlling emotions and not letting them cloud your judgment. Showing the slightest amount of appreciation when being helped. Granted the help is wanted slash needed. My younger brother kept borrowing money and not paying it back until hounded. And then he'd complain that we were mean. After three times, my husband told him we'd loan money once more. But it had to be paid back on the day we said. And he had to say thank you. Brother got angry and said if we were going to be a-holes, he was never borrowing from us again. Fine by us. This simultaneously amuses me, and also makes me mad, that some people can be like this. It's like when awful customers exit the building, by saying I'm never coming back to this establishment. Basic personal finance skills. I was out with my brother, who said I just need to pop in here real quick to pay off my TV for the week, and it got me interested, so I asked him about it. He'd bought the TV on credit, top of the line internet TV worth £700 or so but was paying it back at the rate of £20 a week for about 2 years, no down payment, when he signed up, I questioned him about it, had no clue, what he was going to end up paying, about £2000 across the 2 years for a £700 TV, but was happy, because he went away with a top of the range TV that very day for £20, I was honestly speechless, rent to own is mental, I don't know how it works in the UK, but here, they are required to put the purchase price and the full financing details on the sticker, so it'd say £20 week, £700 retail, £2000 at rate x for y years, or something. Although I'm sure that last bit's a lot smaller, it's even stupider to rent, when you really don't need the thing or already have a lesser version of it, so you have a perfectly fine smaller TV, and could just save for a while. Ideally, you're saving all the time. So when the time comes to buy a new TV, you have £700 in your bank account and you're done. Meanwhile, some of your savings could be earning interest, and if you're like me, you put that £700 on a credit card that earns loads of points towards travel. So not only do you get a £700 TV for £700 and not £2000 you're also getting some amount of free stuff on top of it. That's almost as bad as my mum. She earns way more money than me, but is always broke at the end of the month, and owes me a ton of money. I've been nagging her to change her car insurance, house insurance, etc. Switching every year really does help. I finally went round to sit her down, and go through it. Turns out she's been paying three times, what she could have had. Hundreds of pounds wasted. Last year we also had a phone incident, when I had to come over to see why her mobile phone bill was so high. That ended in me lecturing her. If you can't be responsible I'll take that away, and give you a pay as you go dumb phone. That sounds exactly like what my mum used to be like. When I left school, and got a job my mum charged me rent every month. By the time I was 21 I was paying 400 pounds, to live with my mum. I earned £800 a month at the time. All my friends were paying at most £200. Even though there was no mortgage on the house she claimed every month it was costing her £800 in bills. Just to live in a bog standard 3 bedroom house. I told my mum she was being ripped off every which way possible. But she wouldn't accept it. In the end I ended up saying to her I'm only paying £150 a month. Because it only costs £300. To run this house she still didn't believe me. I had to sit her down. 
and get quotes for every bill and expense she had until she realized being loyal to a company doesn't work. I guess the moral of the story is shop around for whatever it is you're looking for. Loyalty shouldn't be a factor when someone is aiming to take as much money from you as possible. Volume control. You don't have to be the loudest one talking in a room. As an extension of this, I had a flatmate that was so noisy, she didn't speak overly loud, but when she walked down the hallway she stomped. When she shut her bedroom door, she slammed it. When she blew her nose at 6am in the morning, she trumpet each nostril for about 20 seconds straight. She was only small, 4 feet 11. 50 kilograms dripping wet, but got him. When she came home it sounded like a herd of baby elephants. This is my in-laws. My wife didn't realize how loud they all were until trying to keep a baby napping at her folks place. The one that really gets me is dropping cutlery onto a plate, rather than next to it. So loud. No reason. I really got to work on this. Start by lowering the volume of your username. The skill of checking something out, not anything in particular, just taking more than 2 seconds to actually try to even vaguely understand something. I went over to some people's house once to fix the drain pipe on their sink because it was leaking. It had been leaking for weeks and they kept a bucket under it which they emptied out periodically. I looked at it, saw it was leaking from the coupling ring poked it, saw it was loose, and then I tightened the coupling ring with my hands until the leak stopped. I get that some things can be dangerous to screw around with, if you don't know what you're doing, but your drain pipe shower head force it loose hinge etc is not one of those things. Sometimes just having a little curiosity, and poking something a couple times is all you need to fix something yourself. Similar idea with technology, my family loves to have me fix their stuff, because I'm so great with technology. B. I just browse the settings and or google it. All I did, was turn it off and back on. Now I'm technology god of my family. Understanding how credit works, I was amazed the first time I heard about someone who didn't know they had to pay the money back, but I've now heard about it several times, or people not knowing their interest to pay, holy sh, do people think credit cards are miniature money fountains or something, comes from a very simple insidious misleading line buy it now pay for it later, for some people later is just never, or when they've hit the lotto, or when they have that high earning job they deserve. The ability to follow simple directions, such as a recipe, I key instructions are actually really impressive, they're relatively easy to follow, and it's all in picture, you can even tell which screw to use, all you have to do, is follow it step by step, what I notice people do, is try to tackle it on their own and only refer to the instructions, when they get stuck, but they can't figure out which step they should look at, anyway, if I had tried harder in school, I would like to pursue a career in technical illustration similar to this, or those diagrams of machinery, and what not, I key stuff is the easiest in the world to assemble, I didn't even realize some people struggle with it, until I read about it on sites like reddit, one of my favorite parts of online recipes is the comment section. I use these totally different ingredients, and it was awful. Terrible recipe. My mother once gave a woman she knew a recipe. I forget what for exactly. The woman substituted a bunch of flax seed for eggs. Said the recipe was awful, and didn't understand why anyone would use it. It's like the reviews for products on Amazon. I didn't follow the instructions. I disregarded and blatantly violated the safety precautions. It broke the first time I used it, and now they refuse to refund me my money and shipping fees. Wish there was a lower rating, that one out of 5, because this product and the manufacturer are garbage. I read one of those yesterday when looking for a new Irish soda bread recipe. I added twice the buttermilk and less sugar, it was way too liquidy and bland. 2 stars, or my favorite is usually I substituted parsley for cilantro because they look the same. This came out horrible. Some recipe are terrible especially for beginners and I used to hate cooking, so never set foot in the kitchen. But I wanna try again. Lately I tried to follow one. Most directions were clear and good. And there was this one add a little bit of salt. What is a little bit? And then heat it for a short time. What is a short time? And what is not too hot for you? So I'd relating to that the ability to give clear direction with objective measurement. Self-awareness slash common courtesy, like knowing to not have allowed a conversation slash argument in public, or to not drive down a quiet street at 3am with their bass thumping, or blare your music on your phone's speaker. They know what they're doing. 
they just don't care. I can't believe that people can't chew their food without biting their tongue slash cheek. And by people, I mean me. They still haven't managed to learn to drink water without choking on it either. Self-awareness. The issues are threefold. Many people refuse to see any fault in themselves and never grow or improve. In social interactions, it's about being considerate. When it comes to choices, many have developed, learned helplessness where they assume they have no control and are reliant on external assistance. Help. I've tried nothing and I'm all out of ideas. I'm dealing with one of these arguments right now with a gal at work. She's so intimidated by technology. She doesn't even try. If it involves anything other than her trusty, well-known computer, her AOL ML account, and WordPerfect. Yes, you read that right. AOL and WordPerfect. She got that far into the information age, then hit the brakes. I've got to help her set up her gasp work issued smartphone. She's not even learned how to turn it on. These are extremely important. If you aren't growing, you are stagnating. No one is immune to self-improvement. Plus, very rarely do things happen to you. Usually you are present when things happen, or you cause something to happen. Troubleshooting. The have you turned it off and on again joke is way more accurate than it should be. Half of my job is troubleshooting and fixing things, and it amazes me how often people just have no idea how to go about it. On the plus side I've gotten plenty of freesh that was unfixable, but I was able to get working with little to no effort. I'm pretty sure things like people accidentally flipping the wifi toggle switch, and using internet explorer keeps me in business. Awareness slash cleanliness. I live in a dorm and the amount of dirty dishes, clothes, trash etc. That litter the common spaces is astounding. Like, people will bake brownies and then leave the dirty bowl, spoon and caked up pan in the kitchen for days. There's constantly popcorn slash ramen trash on the counters, food in the bathroom, sinks, and trash stuck in the elevator ceilings. I thought I was a truly messy person, and then I went to college. This turned into a rant. Sorry about it. Common spaces are extremely bad for incentivizing cleanliness. Hard to get excited about doing a thorough sweep of a common place when you know Jim gonna take a dump in the sink again on Friday. Tell me about it. We had a communal bathroom in my dorm, and this one guy would shave his pubes on a bench outside the shower every single effing morning, and then he'd just leave them in a little pile on the floor. I don't know what was grosser, seeing him do it, or seeing them. Whenever I needed to take a piss, f cleaning up someone else's pubes, this is parents fault. My daughter had her friend over she took a shower and left her clothes there didn't pick them up. I asked my daughter why, did you leave your clothes on the floor? Her friend piped up my mom picks up my clothes. I told her well your mom is not here. She leaves and this lady has the audacity to call me and say if it was my daughter she would pick up her clothes. I just clicked on her. Seriously she called you. That poor girl is gonna get a rude awakening when she lives by herself. I don't understand people. The ability to pick up on social cues. Like if I'm at work, trying to work, and people won't stop talking to me. Similarly, if I have headphones in, don't talk to me. For real. Some bi I work with does this all the time. Taps me on the shoulder to get my attention. I'm autistic. I should be the one that's naturally terrible at this by nature. But holy f some normal people make me look like a social archangel. It's probably because you know you might not be good at this and pay extra attention to get it right. Some people are just clueless. Driving etiquette. Some people are downright a-holes or just don't know how to drive properly. No indications. No acknowledgement when someone lets them in. Can't merge at the correct speed. Don't check blind spots. Aren't aware of anything outside their own car and drive slow in the fast lane. Learn to drive UFS. How to think. It's not as common a skill as you might hope. Humans have a predisposition toward favoring information that aligns with or confirms their current opinions. In order to counteract that, we need to be willing to approach things without jumping to conclusions or immediately dismissing details that make us uncomfortable. Of course, that's not as easy as it sounds, particularly when there seem to be moral, ethical, or emotional element involved. But it's also not impossible. The act of consciously thinking is pretty simple on its surface, even if it is a bit difficult when presented with a new piece of data, accept it and analyze it. What does this person mean when they say that tomatoes are sentient? 
compare that data to any previously held knowledge. What do I already know about tomatoes, or about the requirements for sentience? If the data challenges that knowledge, examine all of the available evidence. How do I know these supposed facts about tomatoes, neurology, and their lack of a connection? Should the evidence be incomplete, seek to fill out. What didn't I know? Is there any way that tomatoes could actually be the secret overlords of the universe, hell-bent on the destruction of all other life? Form a conclusion, based on the evidence. It seems unlikely that my sandwich ingredients are capable of outsmarting me. Attempt to disprove that conclusion. Excuse me, tomato. Are you currently plotting my demise? Speak up now, or I will eat you. When you examine the evidence, and then form a conclusion, things tend to appear very differently than if you start with a conclusion and then look for evidence to support it tl doctor shockingly few people know how to think the skill to notice when they have a flat tire the amount of cars riding on the rim isn't that big but the fact that it's non-zero just baffles me empathy how fine hard is it to pretend you're anybody else that might have a harder or at least different experience in life than you Thank you, I'm the poor kid in my grade. Instead of treating me like a normal person, they make fun of me for wearing the same 5 shirts over and over again. And not understanding how I'm smiling, when I'm so poor I should be miserable. Honestly, people are stupid. I wonder if I feel bad for the ones who don't have to go through a day without eating, or emotional abuse, or just relieved that that they don't have to go through the crap that I go through. Googling. Jesus F people you have all the information you'll ever need at your fingertips. Stop asking me how to douche just f i n g Google it. How to complain effectively to get a problem solved. Do not. This airline sucks. I'm never flying with you again. Do. As a long time customer, the service I experienced today on flight 318 to Phoenix was not up to the high standard I have come to expect from your airline. This specific thing went wrong, and I would like this specific thing done to correct it. I look forward to discussing the matter with you further. Used to work retail as a store manager. Customer comes in, and acts like a dick. I'm going to follow corporate policy to the T, so you don't get what you want. If I don't have to, want to complain. Here's my regional manager's contact info. I followed corp policy, so I'm good, come and all friendly, and with a nice attitude. I know exactly what rules I can bend, and what rules I can break. I'll get you taken care of, Delta, F off. When we make money, we keep it. If we lose money the government gives us your tax dollars. We don't f i n care, F off. The ability to realize you are blocking the sidewalk slash doorway. Let's stand in the middle of this grocery aisle and talk. Yes there are people constantly saying excuse me and going around me, but I don't notice. I stand and stare at them intently until they realize it. New technique. Works well. I give a half nod slash smile and pass. Not hostile. Just direct and patient. I'd like to broaden that to general awareness of your surroundings. How oblivious people are sometimes just blows my mind. Cooking. Sustaining yourself without the help of someone else is a basic skill that everyone should have some idea about. I'm still surprised when I tell my friends that I can cook. But it's just something I've come to realize is one of the things that gives us control over so many situations in life and is a plain fun thing to do when you're in your own company or even in others and want to cook for them. Holy sh my life. I always thought cooking was some kind of sorcery people learned in far off lands or from passed down secrets from their ancestors or took years of practice to be able to do anything other than heat something up. I literally didn't know how to fry an egg until I was 23. I thought I was a genius for inventing ramen h e s i which was just boiling ramen noodles and putting spaghetti sauce on them because I didn't realize spaghetti noodles were cooked the same way ramen was. Some caring friends realized this and taught me some basics which launched me into the cooking world. That was like 5 years ago and what a refine amazing life change that was. Now I have my own recipes, my own chili won the work chili cook off. I literally built a refined spice shelf for my kitchen. It has three different kinds of paprika on it. TL. Doctor, I was lost thinking cooking was magic I could never learn. It's so much more simple and everyone should learn basic cooking skills. Changed my life for the better and gave me an amazing new hobby. 
can confirm A++ has gotten me laid. The ability to chew with your effing mouth closed. Time management. I don't even understand how someone can always be late. Is it that hard to leave 10 minutes early, so you won't be late this time? My girlfriend is like this. She's one of those people who has their own time. Like when she says she will be somewhere people just automatically tack on an extra hour. I didn't understand it until we started dating and I started seeing her get ready. It was insanity. Long story short, she gets distracted very easily. She will start getting ready with enough time. Then realize she didn't feed the cat when we are about to be walking out the door. But while she feeds the cat she realizes she hasn't watered the plants. And while doing that realizes she hasn't eaten today and should have a snack if we are going to be out for so long. Then she realizes this has messed up her makeup which she needs to redo real quick. Then we are actually walking out the door, but she sees this thing she meant to bring up to her neighbor, and really needs to do. Then ends up chatting with her neighbor for 5 to 10 minutes. The way she explains it is she doesn't realize these things all take several minutes each. In her mind it's only taking a few seconds and she doesn't realize we are an hour late, until we are in the car, and are an hour late. Dating her has been a lesson in patience for me, and also a lesson in time management for her. I made sure I always have a book at her place for when we are getting ready there, and will remind her what time it is every few minutes, gently, and how later we are, and also ask her if such and such thing needs to be done right now, because you know, that will make us 10 more minutes late. I hope one day I can get her off her own time.